A few days ago, I received this awesome power supply kit from Banggood. I will soon 3D print a case for it and start using it. It works nice, has a decent color LCD display and can handle voltages from 0 to 60 volts. But I thought it would be nice to build my own bench power supply for my workshop and show you how to build your own. This is a homemade vintage look bench power supply. I've made it using an old PC power supply, a voltage converter, a cheap current and voltage meter with display and a few more components. The total price is under $10 and that's amazing. So if you want to build a cheap but powerful bench power supply or maybe buy a small kit like this one, maybe this video will help you. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back! If you work with electronics, you will definitely need a power supply for your projects. Usually when your project is already finished, that power supply could be a battery, or maybe a transformer like this one, or even a small power supply like this one here that I've used for my mini CNC milling machine. But when you are testing and you have to switch between voltages value and control the current limit, it is way better to have a bench power supply with some decent connectors, variable voltage and current and some sort of display to show you the values, either digital or analog. So that's exactly what we are going to build today. What you will need for this project is an old but working PC power supply. I've got mine from a scrapyard sale for only $3. The output power isn't that important. Mine is 300 watts and could deliver up to 30 amperes of current for one of its output which it's a lot. I can't possibly imagine in what sort of electronic project I would need that amount of current. So if you have a lower power one it is also good. This kind of power supplies already have a regulated voltage output for 3.3, 5 and 12 volts which are maybe the most common values in electronics. So that it's a nice thing to have, but I want my power supply to have variable output and also to reach higher voltages than only 12 volts. To step down the voltage we could use a buck converter, also called step down converter, because it lowers the voltage. To step it up we could use a boost converter, also called step up converter. There is this perfect module that includes both converters in just one board. This is a DC to DC step up step down voltage converter that uses the LM2577 and the LM2596 drivers to regulate the voltage. You can find the link for this module in the description as always. To maintain this project cheap and easy to build, in order to display the voltage and current values I will use this 7 segment voltmeter and ammeter module that cost around $1. Another option would be to use the current meter that we have built in the past tutorial using Arduino. In this way we could also display the power on the LCD screen because we have the current value and we could easily measure the voltage using one of the Arduino ADC and the voltage divider. Usually all PC power supplies have a short circuit safety feature that turn off the power anytime a short circuit is made. Make sure that yours has this feature. Finally, we would need a case for the power supply, some banana connectors, two potentiometers, switches and wires. I've built my case out of balsa wood. You have the dimensions in the link below if you want to build the same. Then I've painted it with some nice vintage varnish. If you use a metal case, make sure that there is a connection between your case and the actual power supply in order to share earth with the electrical system. My power supply will have a main variable voltage output and some fixed value outputs for the 3.3, 5, 12 and minus 12 volts outputs that the power supply already has. I've designed and glued on the front part of the case this label to give it a nicer look. I've used these small banana connectors for the fixed value outputs and some larger connectors for the variable part of the power supply. I've drilled the holes and fit in place the connectors. 
Now that we have the case, let's take a look at the schematic part. I check the label on the PC power supply to know the voltage output for each wire. In my case, yellow is 12 volts, red is 5 and orange is 3.3. What you have to do now is to join together two or three yellow wires and connect the 12 volts to the input of the step down step up converter. Now also connect ground and test the output. Using these small potentiometers I can change the current limit and also the voltage output. But I want to use bigger potentiometers. So for that, using a soldering iron I take out the two potentiometers. Now I measure the resistance of each in order to use the same values for the big ones. These are 10k potentiometers, so I will use the same value. I solder some wires to the potentiometers and solder the other end of the wires to the voltage converter board. I test the output once again using my multimeter. As you can see, I can increase or decrease the output using the potentiometers. Next, I connect the voltmeter and emitter module. Remember that the voltage is measured in parallel and current in series, so use this schematic to connect the module. The power supply is almost done. To finish the schematic, solder a red wire to the red wire of the voltmeter module. Now solder the common end to the output of the voltage converter. The other end of the red wire goes to a switch and the other pin of the switch to the red banana connector output. Now connect the black wire from the display to the negative output of the voltage converter and the blue wire from the display to the black banana connector output. The display also has these two input wires. Here you have to connect a 5V input to supply the internal electronics and the display light. Connect the black to ground. Use shrinking tube to insulate the connection that you make. For 5 volts, I will use one of the 5V wires from the power supply. In my case is the red wire. Screw in place the enable switch to the front panel. Also screw the two potentiometers, the current control to the top and the voltage on the bottom. Finally add the plastic knob for the potentiometer. This will give it a nicer look. To finish the power supply output I connect each of the 3.3, 5 and 12 volts wires to the extra banana connectors. Be careful and share more ground wires to the powerful outputs. All this power supply needs now is an on and off switch. Usually all power supplies turn themselves on by connecting ground to the green wire. As you can see here, when I make a bridge between those wires, the fan of the power supply turns on. So all I have to do is to add a switch between the green and the ground wire. I connect this type of switch and add it to the front panel of the case. The other switch that we have added is the output enable switch. This switch enables you to fix a voltage value and once it's fixed, connect it to your circuit. That's it. The bench power supply is ready. But I finally add a green LED to one of the 5 volts wires in order to indicate when the power supply is turned on. I fit everything inside of the wood case and give it a first test. I will connect a load to the output and first change the voltage. Now I leave a fixed voltage and change the current limit. As you can see the circuit works perfect. Be careful and read the current and voltage limits of the converter module. In my case the maximum current that this converter module can withstand is 3 amperes and a maximum voltage of 26 volts. Also remember to make holes for the power supply fan and able air to flow and cool the components. All the used schematics are in the description below, so make sure you always check the video description.
if you want to build your own current meter instead of using this cheap display, just watch my Arduino current meter tutorial. Also, if you want to buy this awesome power supply, you will find the coupon link in the description. So, we have built our own vintage and awesome look power supply with less than $10. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share my videos with your friends. If you have any question, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my projects, check my new Patreon page and help my workshop grow and have more other cool tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys.